Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics and we are in section 17.4, so close to the end. Just two more sections after this, you'll be done with this entire book and you can go on to study whatever fantastic mathematics you wanted to study. Determinants of order three. The determinants of a three by three matrix, we shall see that it satisfies properties analogous to those of the two by two case. So when you start considering three by three matrices, there's a little trick. Once you learn the trick, then you're going to go, oh, and you're going to see how to solve determinants of any order. Okay, so we're going to have the matrix A, and we're going to have a shorthand. We're going to use AIJ, which is just the same as this matrix. And I'll write it out for you. A11, A12, A13, and then A21, A22, then A23, and then A31, A32, and then A33. I imagine I'm going to spend half of the video writing out this matrix for you again and again. Okay. So uh, we define this determinant according to the formula known as expansion by a row. Expansion by a row. And what this says is we don't know how to do determinants of order three, but we do know how to do determinants of order two. So we are going to break down this determinant of a, okay? We're gonna take the first row, so we're gonna take the first element of the first row, and then we're gonna multiply that by the determinant of everything else. So the trick is, I'm going to take these two pins, we're going to cross off the row and the column of the element of the row that we're taking the determinant of. Okay, so this is going to be a 2 2, a 2 3, a 3 2, and a 3 3. Then we are going to subtract a 1 2, and the determinant of this matrix. So A21233, A21, A33. Why did I do it this way? I don't know why. A23, and then A31. And finally, we are going to add, let's see if we can fit it in, A, add A13, so this guy here, and this matrix here. A21, A22, A31, A32. Hopefully you're not catching the sound of the garbage truck in the background. That would be distracting. All right, so that is how we calculate the determinant. Again, we use vertical bars around the matrix to describe the, the determinant. We can also, uh, if we say that capital AIJ is the matrix obtained by A from deleting the ith row and the jth element. So we delete the ith row and the jth column. Okay, so we can also write out the determinant this way. This is equal to A11 times the determinant of this capital A11 minus A12 times the determinant of the capital A12 and then plus A13 times the determinant of capital A13. Okay, that's another way to think of it. Okay. As an example, we have to use a lot of paper here. Ooh, I haven't used this for a long time. I don't even know if this marker works. We have A is equal to the matrix 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 4, minus 3, 2, 5. Now, I am just going to write this out in my head because I don't want to write it out for you, but I will explain to you what I did in a second. So this is 2 times 5 minus 8, minus 1 times 5 minus plus 12, plus 0 times 2 plus 3. Okay, so we get 5 minus 8 is 3, this is minus 6. We get 5 plus 12 is 17, so we get minus 17, and this is 0, so we're going to get minus 23. Okay, that's how I did it. What was I doing? Let's go back and look at it again. So we note that the capital A11 is everything after you take out that element and that column and row. So we get one, four, two, five. A, one, two is one, four, minus three and five, right? So we're taking out this column and this row, one, four, minus three, five. And then A, one, three is equal to removing this column and this row. So we get one, one, minus three and two, okay? And so our formula, the determinant of A, is going to be two, that first column, times the determinant of this matrix, one, four, two, five, minus one 
times the uh, the form the determinant of one four minus three five plus zero times one one minus three and two. Okay. Minus 23 is the answer. So that's what I did in my head really quickly. Okay, so you can see minus 5 and 8. You can see 5 and minus 12 and 12. Okay, and that's how you did that very quickly. Okay, you could, if you really wanted to, spell out the determinant like this. And I'm going to write this out. And he says, you do not memorize this formula, you derive this formula. This is way too much to memorize. And when you get to four by four and five by five matrices, it's ridiculous. So don't even try to do this. So I'm gonna write it all out. So you take A11 times A22 times A33, and you subtract A11 times A of 32 and A of 23. And then you subtract A of 12 times A of 21 and a of three, three, yes. And then you add a one, two times a of two, two, and then a of three, one. What I'm doing is I'm doing this in my head and naming them as I go. Then we are going to add a of one, three times a of two, one times a of three, two, and we're gonna subtract a of one, three a of 2, 2, a of 3, 1. I think that's correct. You can double check that I, I believe I got it all right, okay? Once again, I took this guy times this guy times that guy, minus this guy times that guy times that guy, minus this guy times this guy times this guy, plus this guy times this guy times this guy, plus this guy times this guy times this guy, minus this guy times this guy times this guy, okay? Simple? Yeah, it's not, okay? Just memorize this form here. Memorize, memorize this, okay? Memorize where these guys come from, how to figure out what this is. Now, another trick that he talks about, and just to confuse you further, because that's what we're all about here, right? Uh, so suppose we had this matrix. No, this is minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Okay, if you write down um, so you can take the determinant using any row or any column, right? So I could say, well, I want to use this column to do the determinant. So I'm going to take minus this one times the leftover matrix, plus this one times the leftover matrix, and then minus this one times the leftover matrix, right? You can use any row or column to determine the determinant. Um, and so th using this, this, this mental model, you know, the diagonals are plus, and it alternates plus and minus. Using that, you should be able to find the determinant of any square matrix, okay, by taking the subdeterminants of the remaining matrix, okay? As an example, and the reason why you wanna know this is because if there's a zero in that matrix, you wanna take advantage of it, right? So he's gonna take the determinant of this matrix. We have three, zero, one, one, two, five, minus one, four, and two, okay. So uh, we could use any row or any column to solve this, okay? I wanna use that zero, because I'm lazy. So I could do the top row, but he's gonna use the center, the center column here to do this, okay? So in order to expand by that center column, he's gonna say it's minus zero times a determinant of one, two, five, minus one, okay? You see? Because that's a minus sign, right? The plus, the center is plus, plus two times the, mate, the determinant of three, two, one, minus one. And then finally we have minus four times the determinant of three, five, one, and one. Okay, so solving this, we don't have to worry about that at zero. So I've just saved myself a bunch of time. So we have two times six plus one, minus four times 15 minus one. So 15 minus one. So this is two times seven minus four times 14. So that's some large number, 14 minus four times 14. Oh, that's, that's just gonna be equal to minus three times 14. Save myself a little bit of time because 14 is one of the 14s. So that's minus 42, okay? So this is the um, reverse of the solution of life, the universe, and everything, okay? And he gives us theorem three, okay? Theorem three states simply, that if A is a three by three matrix, then the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of A, 
Okay, so if you transpose the terms in A and take the determinant, it doesn't change. You can work this out for yourself, okay? And you can think about how the determinant relates to everything, and it's fairly obvious. Exercises. As you might expect, some of these exercises are brute force. Um, he says in number one, write down the expansion of a three by three determinant according to the third row, the second column, the third column, and verify in each case you get the same six terms as in this formula we got up here. So this formula here that we expanded out, if you take a three by three matrix and you take the second column or the third column or the third row, you'll still get the same formula. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you start with as long as you remember the, the positive and negative signs, okay? Number two, compute the following determinants by expanding according to the second row and also according to the third column as a check for your computation. Of course, you should find the same value. So he says, take the second row, find the determinant. Okay, then take the third column and find the determinant. Make sure you get the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, you made an algebraic mistake. Okay, go back and figure out what you did. Number three, compute the following determinants. Note all the zeros. So please choose a row or a column that has zeros in it. The more zeros, the happier you'll be, okay? Number four, let A, B, and C be numbers. In terms of A, B, and C, what is the value of the determinant of this matrix? So he gives us this matrix A, B, C, with zeros, everybody else, okay? What is the determinant of that matrix? Answer, it is very simple, okay? Number five, compute the following determinants. And he gives you triangular matrices. So matrices that have like something, 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 but you have zeros in a corner, okay? If you have zeros in a corner, something special happens that you will recognize as you try to solve these. Again, please choose a row or column that has more than one zero, okay? It'll make it so much easier for yourself. Number six, in terms of the components of the matrix, what is the value of the determinant? So drawing on your experience from number five, you should be able to do number six rather easily. And that's all the problems, okay? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this section. Have fun, take care, bye-bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.